Welcome everyone. I too uh, wish to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands we're on and uh, to pay my respect to their ancestors and descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connection to country. Um, Minister Farmer, uh, Vice-Chancellor Debbie Terry, members of UQ's uh, Senate and uh, senior executive, HABS faculty and School of Psychology uh, colleagues, representatives from government and community agencies, Jenna McWilliam and uh, representing Triple P International here, uh, and the PFSC staff and students, <coughs> welcome to this evening's celebration. Uh, it's great to have time to just reflect a little on past, present and future of the PFSC. What a remarkable journey we've been on really, from fledgling beginnings of a PhD thesis in psychology in 1981 on parenting of children with disruptive behaviour problems, to today where we have a global system of evidence-based parenting support that's reached millions of families. Uh, it's hard to explain how it happened. Um, we developed a shared vision very early. Uh, in fact, in 1996, when I joined the School of Psychology, after 15 years being an academic in the Department of Psychiatry in the med school at UQ, uh, I had one major goal, and it was to establish a parenting and family intervention centre that would develop and test innovative interventions that would support parents in the critical but demanding task of raising healthy, well-adjusted children. I wanted to develop a research centre clearly focused on producing meaningful social impact to positively influence the lives of children and families. My first sabbatical at UQ in 1983 um, <coughs> took me to Stanford University, where I learned from the best around at the time about public health approaches to the prevention of heart disease. Um, right back then, I realised that we needed a public health population-based model to support uh, parenting in our community. <clears throat> Over the next 15 years, um, we developed a team, many of whom are here tonight, uh, and they were there right back in the uh, 80s and 90s, where the core Triple P program was being developed. It didn't have a name until 1993. And the foundational evidence was created. Um, when we moved to psychology from psychiatry, um, we had no roadmap. We d had really no idea about how to guide the development, the testing, scaling or the sustainment of a psychosocial intervention. In those days, we had a limited understanding of IP, intellectual property, copyright, or even less what was involved in commercialisation of social science innovation. Um, there were no uh, role models that we could follow at that time which would give us the guidance of exactly how to do this. Uh, we had no idea about the immense logistical challenges involved in delivering professional training in different countries and different languages. Um, and there was a lot of trial and error learning that took place. Having an industry partner, uh, Triple P International, was crucial to the scaling of Triple P uh, to create a roadmap and to help this program uh, go to scale. It started as a startup company, um, many of which fail quite quickly. Triple P, around, uh, has been, Triple P International has been around for several decades now as our trusted industry partner um, working through UniQuest and uh, on behalf of the university disseminating this body of knowledge and of course Triple P is owned by a major public institution at UQ. <clears throat> we were determined and persistent. Our research and development efforts have been ongoing, constantly searching for better solutions and ways of working with families wherever they are and where, whenever they're looking for support and assistance in raising children. 
The development of a scalable intervention takes time and funds. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Even with an effective dissemination mechanism, such as through Triple P International, getting programs out there at scale takes a much longer time frame than most people realise. Program development uh, doesn't end with the conducting of a successful randomised trial you know, that everyone's sort of searching for when they're developing an intervention. It's a good beginning, but only a beginning. We learned the challenges that you confront are opportunities. When COVID-19 pandemic hit us all, and as we're still living with it, um, it brought all in-person professional training in Triple P around the world pretty much to a halt. Triple P International had to nimbly transition to professional training via Zoom um, and we were involved in conducting a systematic evaluation that compared 57,000 practitioners trained in person in Triple P with about uh, 7,600 practitioners trained online and there were no statistically significant differences in any training outcomes. Um, that surprised me because I was convinced that in-person training really was essential. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in response to COVID, we also developed downloadable parent resources, a 20-episode podcast series, a 12-episode um, television series with Channel 7, Parenting in a Pandemic, to support families at a very difficult time. None of this research was funded. None of this program development work. We had any funds whatsoever to do, but we did it because I felt we had an ethical and professional obligation to do something to support our families at such a difficult time. Behind the scenes of all of the support of our families was absolutely crucial. None of the PFSC achievements could have happened without the support of our own families. Uh, special thanks to my wife Trish, who's here tonight, for her unwavering support for me over 45 years. Including the many months I had to travel overseas on Triple P or university business. Since the COVID tra travel restrictions have come, she's still getting used to and recovering from the shock of me being home <laughs> and around so much. But uh, So the present. Um, after 25 years, the PFSC is still going strong. We're still passionately committed to the goal of supporting children and families in our community. We continue to test programs across a range of contexts and populations. We have students from all around the world. We oversee clinical trials both locally and internationally. Our international students have had an especially tough time uh, over the past 18 months and I hope they know, uh, as we know, that they're part of our uh, Aussie family. Our team uh, is involved in 20 intervention projects right now, including some exciting new programs in development, such as Family Life Skills Triple P for parents who've had a history of trauma, Teen Connect Triple P for parents of adolescents with mental health and peer relationships difficulty, and Play Well Triple P for developed for the NRL to try to reduce parent punch-ups on the sideline at uh, kids' sporting games. Um, to promote children's enjoyment and participation in junior sport. We are leading national efforts to promote greater collaboration and advocacy for evidence-based parenting and family support programs with the formation of the Parenting and Family Research Alliance, PAFRA. This has brought all parenting researchers uh, who are involved in evidence-based programs in Australia competing programs together this is a group who systematically ignored each other, damned each other with a faint praise or attacked each other, and we brought them all together on the same page with a common vision of promoting the well-being of children and getting more evidence-based parenting support out there in the community. We are leading the first global digital congress on evidence-based parenting support from an Australian base that will be um, in uh, 2023. So what's ahead? 25 years is a good time to pause and reflect. We have just completed a comprehensive internal review of our centre's operations. Um, thank you, Debbie Terry, for uh, supporting that and enabling that to occur. It's been extremely valuable to help us focus on uh, our strategic directions and what we need to be doing differently. 
There are three priority areas that stand out for me. First, we must continue to innovate and develop effective digital solutions relating to parenting to really substantially upscale the reach and global impact of interventions that we developed. The vast majority of the world's population do not access evidence-based parenting programs at all. Uh, secondly, we need to develop new ways of delivering professional training and support to practitioners. COVID-19 has taught us one thing, is that there are many exciting possibilities for enhancing professional training through a research process that particularly looks at the optimization of AI and its uh, capacity to contribute to um, training professional skills. Increasing reach and lowering costs. And finally, we're strongly committed to our centre focusing on the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. We believe that parenting programs and family support programs can play a crucial role in addressing most, if not all, of the 17 uh, SDGs. The aim is to help parents help their children develop the knowledge, skills and confidence they need for ecologically sustainable living. In closing, I want to acknowledge the tremendous work of my co-authors, most of whom started as students at UQ, uh, who've contributed to the many different Triple P programs over the years. Many of you are here tonight, Karen Turner, Carol Markey Dads, Alan Ralph, Alina Morowska, Vanessa Cobham, Helen Storman, James Kirby, Jess Bartlett, Cassie Didman, Amy Mitchell, Karen Healy, Carmen Spry, Aileen Pigeon, Felicity West, and in WA, Trevor Mazzucchelli and Lisa Studman. And there are other authors who are contributing to new programs that are being developed. A special call out to our industry partner, Triple P International. Desmond William couldn't be here tonight, um, but they have played such a crucial role in disseminating Triple P around the world. Universities can't do this easily. We need industry partners. And finally, thank you to the Queensland Government and particularly the advocacy of Minister Farmer for making Triple P accessible to over 500,000 Queensland families throughout Queensland since uh, 2015. And many more will be participating in the future. I'm looking forward to the next 25 years. I might not be here to see it out, but <laughs> I would like to say that the PFSC and UQ are open for business. And what I mean by that is that we are absolutely committed to successful engagement with community partners, industry partners. And so if there are groups here tonight who are interested in, the, in working with us at the PFSC, please make contact. We'll be happy to see if we can um, um, work together. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.